In this video we're going to take a quick look at uh, characterizing uh, this little uh, Wiltron uh, RF power detector I picked up at a ham fest a few weeks ago just to be sure it's uh, doing what we expect it to do. So in order to characterize that we're going to generate a, uh, an RF signal here that's just a pulsed RF signal carrier frequency of 100 megahertz. We're pulsing it at a uh, 3 kilohertz rate with a square wave so it's just creating a series of RF pulses. If we look at it here on the scope um, I can see, you know, this is basically just a, a pulsed RF signal. So the first thing we want to do really quick is just to take a look at the, uh, the, rising, the rising edge of this RF pulse and the falling edge of the RF pulse to ensure that they're, they're going reasonably quick so that um, we can, uh, you know, see what the actual response is of this detector, not, uh, not just following what the RF is doing. So we can kind of just use the uh, delayed sweep here to kind of zoom in on that. So we just, uh, again, activate the delayed sweep by pulling on the knob and adjust our B sweep. We can see we're kind of highlighting it on a certain area here. So I go down to say 200 nanoseconds of division and I'll adjust that del the delay here. As I go across, we can actually see that falling edge of the RF signal. Let's zoom in a little bit more here. So it looks like we're falling uh, you know, a little in, well within say about or about a hundred nanoseconds or so. So that's not too bad. But uh, in most cases, we're more interested really in the the response of the rising edge anyway. Um, you know, when the RF pulse comes on, how quickly is this detector going to follow that? So let's uh, scoot over and look at the rising edge. Okay, so just adjusting the delay here until we get to the rising edge. And I kind of pull in here. There's the rising edge. So I can see this thing's coming up pretty quick. In fact, if we zoom in a little bit more. There's a 20 nanoseconds of division. Move my delay over. And if I look carefully, this thing looks like it's it's rising. It looks like essentially right at the first cycle. In fact, what we'll do is we'll tell the B sweep to be triggered, and uh, so we can actually take a look at that. And I can actually see that yeah, that we're triggering. Or we can see we're coming up to basically full amplitude right after the first cycle. So this thing has got a very fast RF rise time. So uh, should be sufficient for, to do what, uh, what we want to do here in terms of characterizing the speed of this detector. So I've got the detector loaded currently into 50 ohms. This is going to give me a very fast response because uh, the detector is essentially a series diode with some shunt capacitance that's it's dumping the, uh, the detect detected RF into. That's going to be in parallel with the capacitance on the scope input as well. Okay. So, uh, but now with the scope impedance set to uh, 50 ohms here, that 50 ohms is going to bleed off that cap really quick. So, um, uh, so we're going to get a uh, you know a quick response both on the rising and falling edge, you know, even after the pulse goes away. And the rising edge is really going to be limited to you know by the series diode impedance um, and and the capacitor that's there. So, let's add channel two in here. Okay, so now I can actually see channel two. And uh, if we look at this, I can actually see, you know, there is the rising edge of the RF. This is the negative going detector. So I can actually see the, you know, the detector coming down. And I'm looking at, say, 100 nanoseconds of division here. Let's kind of zoom it out to, say, 50 nanoseconds of division. Move this over. So I can see the response of this, dio this, this detector. Is, it's coming down within, you know, between 50 and 100 nanoseconds. So, uh, so that's pretty good. And because I've got, you know, I'm in this 50 ohm uh, load impedance here, I can actually see, you know, the RF ripple, you know, if you will, because we're detect, we're discharging that cap between each RF cycle, so I can actually see that going on. So I'd expect that, but that's good. Now, if we scoot over and look at the the other edge, okay, if I kind of all come across here with the delay, look at the RF falling edge, I can actually see that we're kind of almost following that here as well, and I kind of expect that because we're discharging that cap so fast with that uh, 50 ohm termination. So, uh, but what's interesting with this scope is that um, we can look at that rising and falling edge simultaneously. We can put this into a kind of a dual delaying sweep uh, mode. But right now we're in kind of a single delayed sweep where I can just kind of move the, uh, the delay across and make measurements at different areas. Okay, but what I can also do is look at, at the other side. If I hit the delta T button here, 
Okay, that brings up a second delayed sweep area. So if I put that on, you can actually see it comes up with another bright spot over here, and I can move that one separately. See, I've got one here and one here. I can move them independently. So if I move uh, one of them here to look at, say, the RF falling edge, bring that up on screen. Let me get that uh, zoomed in here. There we go. Right about there. And if I move the other one in here and look at the RF rising edge, there it is. Let's kind of get that one on screen. So now I've got them both on screen, but they're kind of overlapping. It's kind of tough to see. So this is where we switch from doing an alternate between the A and the B sweep and just go to the B sweep because that'll give me both those delayed features. And I do that by simply pushing the, um, the horizontal uh, sweep knob here back in again to just give me the B sweep. And when I do that, I'll kind of switch it back and forth. We can see we go from alternating A to B to just the B, and those are the two independent B sweeps. So one of them delayed so that I can see the falling edge of the RF, and the other one delayed so I can see the rising edge of the, of the RF, and uh, so I can see both of those responses. And that's about what I expect to see. Not a, not a huge response, only about uh, 20 millivolts or so on this one volt peak to peak RF input, but that's about what you'd expect to see when loaded into 50 ohms. Okay. Now we go. Let's kind of go back and look at this again. I'll turn the uh, the second delay off. And uh, what I'm going to start off by doing is switching over now to uh, instead of a 50 ohm load, let's go into a 1 mega ohm load. So if I go into the 1 mega ohm load, the response is going to be much much bigger. So let's go change our uh, our volts per division setting here for channel two, and I can actually see, you know, this is now the response of the detector. That's kind of what we expect, because the rising edge, when the RF comes on, uh, we're basically going to dump some charge through that diode into the capacitor, okay, and that's what we're kind of seeing here. But then when the RF goes away, that capacitor is left to discharge through the one mega ohm input impedance here, so it's going to get a very slow fall time. But I'm really more interested in what, in what my rise time is, or in this case it's the fall time of this edge, but it's the response to the rise time of the RF signal. So let's go zoom in on that. Okay, so if I work my way over and find that rising edge here, okay, I might have to slow this down a little bit, grab a little more time, okay, and a little bit more, okay, there we go, and I can actually go see that, and uh, I just need to bring that uh, trace up here a little bit, so, um, so I've zoomed in on that a little bit so I can actually see that response, okay. And we kind of move that over here. We're looking now at uh, five microseconds of division. So it looks like I'm going, you know, this is the zoomed in portion of that edge, right? So if we look at this, we go five microseconds, 10, oh, between 10, you know, 10 and 15 microseconds of a rising edge. That's not great, but it's not horrible. It depends on uh, what kind of system you might be working on and whether or not a 10 or 15 microsecond response time. Uh, is adequate to characterize a uh, you know a particular RF pulse or to provide a trigger on an RF pulse in a scope, for example. But uh, it's all going to depend on repetition rate and things like that in terms of what that signal is doing um, in order to be able to, whether it's usable or not. But the way these kind of these power detectors work, their response amplitude and their, also the response speed is going to be a function of you know the load impedance that you present to them. So. Yeah, we did a, a fairly big extreme here from going from 50 ohms to 1 mega ohm. And obviously we get a, di a kind of a, a response that's in between these two that I've shown you here if you uh, set their impedance to something else. But this is uh, certainly enough to tell me that this detector is working as expected. And uh, I can use this uh, as I need to when I'm looking at some pulsed RF signals.